I'm going to give you a really interesting example here, which even a lot of engineers don't know this. This is really interesting. Take your watch, for example. Analog watch, digital watch, like this. They use what's called a quartz crystal in them. Now, this is what makes uh, the, it keeps accurate time on them. So let me, and I'll show you a microscope view. Ta-da! I've got, under here, we've got a quartz crystal. And this is what causes, th this is what makes watches and your computers and everything else keep very accurate time. So let me get rid of that. There we go. Keep very accurate time. This one here is actually a really big one. Um, of course, you get smaller ones inside a watch. And they can be shaped like a disc like this. And they can be shaped like a tuning fork or something like that. So what this is, is a piece of quartz crystal. Okay? And when you apply an electric field to it, it vibrates at a very specific frequency. And that frequency is what determines how accurate your watch is, or your clock, or, your, or how fast your computer runs, or anything like that. What we're going to do is, <laughs> who thinks, okay? Here's a question. Get ready. If I have my watch facing upwards, like that, and it runs at a certain, you know, it works at once per second, ticks over, counts the time, who thinks that time is going to change, or that frequency is going to change, if I rotate it like that, or turn it upside down? Who thinks it's going to change or stay the same? This is a real interesting gravity example. You won't get this anywhere else. You don't think it'll change? No, because why? Uh, Very good. Very good. Anyone else? Good. Yes. Maybe one you are person. correct. Yeah. Very good. Most people there, seeing that everyone seems to think they stay the same. The time's not going to change. What if I told you that it does change? Would anyone believe me? No one no. believes me. No one believes me. Okay. We can do an experiment. I've actually got some gear in my lab that I can prove that the time changes when I rotate it like this. But I didn't say how much. I didn't say by how much. You are correct. Those, um, all three of you were correct when you said that uh, because nobody would buy that watch, right? You need an accurate uh, uh, timepiece and things like that. Well, let me show you. Here we go. Okay, I, I can prove it that this changes because if I go back to, if we look at the microscope, oh, sorry, I should have been full size there. If we look, look at the microscope view here, okay, imagine this is the force of gravity pushing down like this. There's actually a force on that disc, on that uh, crystal, which vibrates, okay? So, so this thing vibrates. You, you can't see it. There's no way I'd be able to show you under this microscope. It's so minute that you just, yeah, you just won't be able to see it. But there's a force of gravity on this. So when this rotates like this, there's a minute difference in the force on the contact area of that crystal. And when we flip it over, so if we go 180 degrees over like that, you would think that the force is the same, it's just on the other face, but because it's on the other face, technically that force now comes from the bottom, if you know what I mean, right? It's like, because if you're talking about the other face as the reference, it comes from the bottom. Anyway, let me show you. I'm going to prove it. I'm going to prove it. <laughs> You won't see this experiment anywhere else. It's very minute. It's very minute. But it does actually happen. So, will this work? What I've got here, okay? Well, no. What I've got here. This is an atomic clock. This is what's used in GPS satellites and to keep reference time in standard laboratories around the world and other stuff. It's incredibly accurate. It's one of the world's most accurate uh, clocks, okay? So it actually, um, it actually works, it's called a rubidium frequency standard because it actually determines its frequency based on how a rubidium atom vibrates. And that's 
physics and basic basic laws of physics and it's very that atom that rubidium atom always vibrates the same and it's very accurate so that's called an atomic clock and they're used in gps satellites and i've got one here so it's very accurate so what this goes into is called a frequency counter and this frequency counter is displaying the how many times the uh, crystal inside here so this actually has a uh, crystal inside of it. it has a quartz crystal just like your watch so just imagine this is your watch it's your digital watch or your analog watch with a quartz crystal in it and this is displaying the time very accurately okay this is actually 10 million cycles per second but if you divide it by 10 million that gives you one pulse per second which your watch uses so this is pretty much exactly like your watch and you can see that it's 10.0000000004 at the moment but watch what happens if i rotate it <laughs> here we go hopefully this works Ta-da, I've rotated at 90 degrees. It's changed to 001. Or, you know, 10, 10 million point zero 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 two. <laughs> so, but, and if I flip it all the way over, like that, all the way over, it has changed to 9.999. So it's only changed by like five digits there or something like that. There are seven, actually. I think about seven digits or so but it has changed when it's upside down. So if I put that back, it'll go back, should go back to exactly where it was before. That's the idea, it's <laughs> but you saw it change. It should actually, it will eventually get back there, I think. Yeah, yeah, there we go. It's it, Yeah, there we go, it went back to exactly where it was. But if I flip it over, it changes. The time, the number of vibrations per second that the crystal in here vibrates at is changed because of the force of gravity the absolute minute force of gravity pushing down on that little itty bitty crystal in there was enough to change it but you will never see this on your watch you'll never ever see it it is so small it's insignificant the a typical digital watch like this is accurate to 15 seconds per month this would only change it oh geez i haven't even done the calculation um, 0. 0.0000000001 second per month or something like that but it's there and if you're doing very accurate physics or other scientific experiments you have to take something like that into account it's very important so there you go that's very cool huh that's the a, a an actual demonstration of gravity affecting objects awesome huh I hope everyone liked that. <laughs> you won't get that experiment anywhere else. It's very rare to actually, it's a, there's a lot of even engineers who don't know that that happens. There you go. But it's only when you design really accurate products that really accurate products that need very accurate time that that becomes a problem. So there you go. Hope, I hope everyone liked that. It, it, nothing will happen on your watch. As I explained, your, your watch is not, it doesn't have enough digits on it. It only has like one second accuracy, or even if you put your stopwatch on and it's one one hundredth of a second, that's still not enough to see the difference. You would have to add all those zeros that we saw on, on the screen. You'd have to add those to the display of your watch to actually see that difference. No, it's, it's incredibly small. I, I just wanted to demonstrate that in theory, it, well, and, and, in, and in practice, it does do that. It does change, but it's so minute that you'll never see it in your watch. You won't see the difference in the time change. It's so small, but it's there. And that's the important, and that's the interesting bit. Yes, yes, you would. If this watch had enough digits on it, just like our frequency counter over there, yeah, we would see it um, change, and then it would come back. Yep. How do you, oh, that's a really good question. Thank you. Um, I was working at a company that designed underwater sonar and oil exploration equipment. And we would actually, I, 
was part of a team that actually designed these these recorders that would be dropped to the bottom of the ocean and they had to uh, they had to record the vibration uh, that comes back it's, it's hard to explain but anyway the way they find oil is they make an explosion on the top of the water up here and the vibrations go down and they penetrate the vibrations go down and they penetrate the uh, under the ocean bottom and then they reflect back and the instruments we, we designed were designed to measure those reflected vibrations and by using multiple ones you can work out where the oil is um, and, and then you drill in the correct spot for the oil but anyway because they're on the bottom of the ocean there's there's no cables going back up to the surface uh, there's no Wi-Fi communication there's no nothing there's no networking there's no GPS reception um, all of these units had to have very accurate clocks in them so that they could synchronize all of their data so that we could uh, so there, there were no errors in the data when you try and find your oil and that's why um, yeah this was one of the problems these these are uh, clocks would change frequency if the thing landed on the ocean bottom like that or like that so there you, there you go that's how i found out about it because you don't learn that in your normal university um engineering course you only found found out that through it's a problem in the real world no the force of gravity is the same it's always the same it's coming down essentially coming down on the surface like this but it only changes when you change the rotation of the piece of quartz crystal inside there and and if you flip it all the way over the force is the same direction but because the reference side is now upside down that's why it changes by by the most amount 